In this video, you will get the access to challenge and chess exercises and my real-time thinking process. The best way to benefit from this training is to try to solve all the puzzles yourself. Whenever you see this sign, put the video on pause, take your time, calculate, and press play once you think you've got the solution. Train your visualization following the variations I'm talking about and check if your solution was correct. I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and your improvement starts right now. What is here? Uh, first move that comes to mind is, of course, Queen takes g5. So we are down the material, but we are in the attack, and uh, it's our only chance to attack the king. So Queen g5, King g5, Bishop e7, double check from the rook and the bishop. Is there a way for the king to hide? If king goes back to g6, rook g5, checkmate. If king goes to f4, there is a follow-up in the form of uh, knight to d3, check. Force in the king to e4, uh, where after we play rook e5, check. Uh, king goes to d4, we play something like um, bishop to c5, check. King goes to c4, and there is no follow-up anymore, because if we play rook e4 or something, uh, there is uh, king to d5. But now I can see that when we have the rook on e5, bishop on c5, and he's king on c4, we have knight to b2, check. So maybe it's better for him to play something like into c3 after that check on c5 and position comes really unclear. So let's focus on this line. Queen g5, king takes g5. Why bishop e7? Because we should uh, cover h4 square uh, after bishop e3, let's say. Um, first of all, he can go to f6. Second of all, he can go to h4. I think there is no check made there and we're just down the queen. So queen g5, king g5, bishop e7 is absolutely... Uh, only move, king goes to f4. Now, should we play uh, necessarily this knight d3 check? Because we have also bishop d6 check possibility. Uh, this forces the king to e4. Now, um, what? Rook to e5 check. King goes to d4. So he has only c3 square to occupy. Maybe we should deal with this like c3 check king takes c3 and now something like you know rook e4 uh, controlling almost everything so bishop b4 checkmate is a threat after that uh, he has king d2 king d2 doesn't help because of bishop b4 checkmate so he has to play something like a5 or rook to b8 in which case we have what? Bishop b5 check. King to d2. Bishop f4 check. He goes back to c3 and rook c4 checkmate, right? So, here's the line. Queen g5, king g5, bishop b7 check. King goes to f4, only move, because it was a double check. Bishop d6, check. Uh, king goes to e4, only move. Rook to e5, check. Uh, king goes to d4. And because if king goes back to f4, there is knight d3, checkmate. So king goes to d4 after rook e5, check. Now we play c3, check. Again, forcing the king to take on c3. Now we play rook to e4. Creating a sort of bishop b4 checkmate. If king goes to d2 now, then bishop b4 checkmate. So his only defense is to play something like rook b8 or a5, doesn't matter, covering b4 square, otherwise it will be just a checkmate on b4. In this case, we play bishop e5 check, forcing the king to d2, then bishop f4 check, forcing the king to c3, and then rook c4 checkmate. I think I'm not mistaken, I think it's just a line leading to a checkmate, so let's do it. Now 
Nice, isn't it? Oh, nice. I have a feeling that I already saw that many times before. So, we have the extra knight, and uh, if he manages to exchange our g3 pawn, it should be a draw. Uh, but the point here is that the king is seriously limited, which means that we have some checkmating ideas. Uh, so, our candidate move, an obvious one, is king to f3. Say we play king to f3, controlling g4 square. g5, h4 are only moves for black. Okay, let's see. King f3, say h4. g4. It has two moves after that. h5 or g5. Let's say he plays h5. If we play g5, it's a stalemate. Take on h5, takes on h5, it's also a stalemate. Oh, okay, it's not a stalemate, but it's, it's, it's a draw already. So king f3, h4, g4, h5, we have to move the knight. Knight goes to e3. Takes on g4, knight g4, g5. What's that? Should be a draw. Okay. What about just playing knight e3 on the move number one, just right now? <clears throat> If let's say he plays uh, king to h2, we have knight to g2 move. And uh, if he plays something like king h3, we have knight f4 followed by knight g6, and then we blockade h pawns. If he plays uh, king h1, we just play knight f4 and take on h5. Should be also winning. So knight e3 deserves attention. Uh, king h2, knight g2, um, g5. Let's imagine he plays g5 in that case. We come back to e3. King h3. Knight to f5. Yeah, it's somewhat unclear. I don't know. Okay, if after knight e3 he simply plays h4, is there a difference for us? We just play g4. Plays h5, play g5, and he has h2 squared. That is the difference. That is the key difference. All right. No, it's unclear to me, but I think we have nothing better than uh, knight to e3 because if you play king f3, just h4, g4, h5, it's a stalemate by force, or he manages to exchange everything. Uh, if uh, instead we play something like knight d2, all right, he plays same h4. So I think knight to e3 should be played. And now is the question, what to do now? So now we can play king f3, I think. King f3, he plays g4. We come back to f2, he plays h4. We play knight to f1, he takes on g3. No, it's, it's not good for white. But that is something very close to, to, to the uh, idea. Okay, king f3, g4, king f2, h4, we play knight to g2, h takes g3, king g1, and yeah, that is a stalemate uh, for black, so he meant, uh, has to play h5, h4, and there is a checkmate on it. Okay. Here it is.
Hello. 2900. Yes. Let's go further. Let's try to make three solvent. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, a new record. I like it. <clears throat> So we have the rook and two minor pieces against the queen. It's very tempting to play knight to a5 check, because if king goes to a2, uh, there is what? There is just a check made on a4. The same is about knight d2, by the way. Uh, knight to d2 check, for example. Uh, if king goes to a3, there is bishop c5 check, king a2, rook a4 check made. So to knight d2, the only move is king to c3. Now. What can we do now? You would play rook c4, king goes to d3, simply. There is nothing there. I think that it should be somehow connected with the battery, maybe. There is also an interesting idea. Look, uh, knight d2, king goes to c3. Play bishop d4. King goes to d3. I think it's the only move because if king goes to the uh, fourth rank, uh, we can just play bishop b5. Check and takes the bishop, queen on b8. So bishop attacks the queen. So king goes to d3. After that, we play king to d1. So our knight is on d2, king on d1, bishop on d4, his king is on d3. Rook is still on h4. In this case, he has no checks, because queen b3 or queen b1 would just take the queen, there is no stalemate, obviously, because knight no longer controls c4 square. So he has no checks, his king is completely limited after that. And we have sort of simple idea of moving the bishop somewhere and then rook d4 checkmate, something like this. Is it possible to win this position with white? That's an interesting thing to check. We can obviously try the same with the knight on a5, almost the same, so uh, knight to a5 check, as we discussed, king c3 is the only move. Now, bishop goes to d2 check, king goes to d3. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that well. <clears throat> Nice idea, look, if our knight is on a5, his king is on c3, uh, and our rook is on d4, we can play bishop d2 check, and if he takes on d4, there is knight c6 fork, but we somehow don't have enough time to implement it. It's all about forks, it's all about this coordination, so knight d2, let's come back to knight d2, I wanna... Uh, bring it to the end, that idea. So knight d2, king c3, bishop d4, king to d3. If we play uh, rook h3, doesn't make sense. King goes to e2 or king takes the bishop. So king to d1 looks interesting, limiting the king uh, completely. So what happens, for example, if you play something like, do you know, queen to g3, attacking our rook. I think there is nothing. So, we play bishop f2, queen f2, rook h3, king goes to d4. Yeah, it's a wrong idea. 
I think it's 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 the wrong direction. <clears throat> okay, so knight e2, king c3. What else? If not bishop to d4. Um, there is a threat of queen b2 check, obviously. So something like rook h3 or bishop f4 will be too slow. Okay, so let's come back to uh, actually knight to a5 check. This looks slightly more promising because there are some additional ideas with uh, knight c6 and so on. So knight to a5, king goes to c3. Oh, let's make a guess. I don't know, knight a5 is probably wrong. No, it's correct. Okay, I was lucky here. Now what? Queen b2 is threatening. I can see two candidates. Bishop d2, bishop d4 is follow-ups. Uh, rook to h3 is a typical idea as well. So it's a battery, but uh, I don't think it works. It just looks very, very slow. Oh, rook to b4. Remember, this is what I'm missing. So, rook to b4 move right now. If queen takes b4, there is bishop d2. Knight control c4 and b3, and I take on b4 next move. If king takes b4, I have knight c6. Yeah, that is amazing thing. So, look, rook b4 with the threat of rook b3. Checkmate. So, <clears throat> this forces this rook b4 forces the queen to g8. Yeah, I think rook b4 is 100% correct. Queen g8 is the only move. Now there should be something. You play rook b3, queen b3, and bishop d2 will win the queen, right? Yes. Just like that. Wow. Amazing. I completely forgot about this idea, but well, thanks God I just found it by the end. Look, rook b4, great thing. So we have only two minor pieces against the queen, but we have a pair of connected fast pawns. <clears throat> At the moment, there is a threat of just taking only one, right? As for tempo moves, we have like a8 queen move. Mm, we have knight to e6 check. After knight to e6 check, I don't think we accomplish anything. So I think we should focus on a8, maybe b7. b7 is potentially also dangerous for black. But if we play b7, he takes only one with check. King h2, queen g3. Queen to h1, queen to f3 check, and then queen checks. Our king along diagonal g1 a7 takes a7 pawn, and everything is fine for black, I guess. So a8, I think that is the move. So a8 queen, uh, if he takes on e1, we just take on h2. We have extra minor piece. Uh, he has a perpetual, uh, but not more than that. Or maybe he doesn't even have a perpetual, don't want to calculate it at all, because I think after a8 he has to take on a8, which check. In that case we play b7, um, attacking the queen. Now his resources are limited, uh, because if he takes our knight, uh, we play simply b8 queen, queen b8, bishop g3, and it's a stalemate after king takes g3. Should Probably he has to play something like uh, queen to b8 immediately or queen to a7, just uh, covering b8 square. And that is the question what to do in that case. So a8, queen a8, b7, queen to b8, for example. We can play bishop g3. 
King takes g3 and knight to c6. Attacking the queen, if queen goes away, we play b8. If queen takes b7, it pins our knight and it's a stalemate. Another one. All right. So a8, queen a8, b7, queen a7 is probably a move. In which case, if we play the same, bishop g3, king g3, and knight c6, he just gives us a checkmate over queen g1. So a8, queen a8, b7, queen a7 is a critical and main line. <clears throat> Maybe bishop f2. If queen takes f2, then b8 queen. If queen b8, we just transpose to the previous line. If queen a1 check, we just play king takes h2. And there is no chance to stop b8 followed by bishop g3. No checks and so on. Yeah, I think it is a solution. Let's go. Let's see what is going on here. Oh, it's a famous pattern. So we should dominate the bishop with the knight. So we have that passed pawn. Mm. If we start with the a6, we already create a threat of uh, promotion. His king is out of square. So... If he takes an f7, we just play a7 and promote the pawn. So after a6, I think c5 is the only move, or potentially uh, something connected with the uh, bishop f3 should be also considered. If he plays c5, I think we just play what? We just play king g3, control and f3. Or we start with the knight d6. Yeah, we start with the knight d6 check. Uh, king goes to, I don't know, d8 or d7, doesn't matter. And then. Uh, we just play uh, king to g3 and it's over for black because there is no chance to stop our pawn anymore yeah so after a6 i think he has to play what he has to play uh, bishop to f3 right now we can play king g3 after that but bishop goes to g1 uh, h1 sorry so, what else? <clears throat> A6, bishop to f3. Knight to g5. Bishop goes to d5. Knight goes to e6. If bishop takes e6, then a7 wins. If c5, then knight c7 fork takes d5, and this should be winning. Mm. Knight g5, bishop d5, knight e6, what else? King to d7. Just knight to c5 check. King goes to c8. All right, we're close, but not close enough. What is interesting, I already saw this study. Uh, I solved this study already. But okay, let's forget about it and try to calculate again. I think a6 is a correct move, 100%. Create a concrete square of a7. If he plays, let's say, c5, we'll just win immediately by playing uh, knight e5, I think. And the bishop is completely dominated, so there is no chance, no time to bring the bishop to the long diagonal to stop our pawn. Because the knight on e5 will control everything, g6, f7, g4, f3, and so on. If he plays knight, bishop e2 or so on, we'll just play e7, a7 and wins. So, a6 forces black to play bishop to f3. It's the only move. Now we have several ideas. We can close diagonal, uh, I mean, blockade the pawn c6. 
to make a7 possible. We can create a straight over fork once he plays c5, let's say it makes his bishop vulnerable and so on. So the bishop f3, we have several candidates. So we have knight e6 check, we have knight g5, we have knight e5, we have king g3. The problem with the king g3, why I don't like this king g3 idea, that bishop goes to h1 and we can't really make a progress there. So uh, knight goes to g5 instead. <coughs> it's a tempo move, so if you play, say, uh, king to d7 after that, we take the bishop on f3, king c7. Uh, we may be not in time, by the way, so maybe knight g5 doesn't work. Okay, what about knight to e5? Similar ideas. No, it doesn't work either. Okay. So a6, bishop to f3, what can we do there? If we play knight d6 check, he goes to d7 simply. And if a7, then c5. Right, what if we start with the knight move, in fact? So what if we start with, let's say, knight to e5 move, just limiting the activity of the bishop almost completely. So knight to e5, if you play c5 in this case, we just play a6. It's over. We already saw that it's just uh, the other order of moves. So knight to e5, what to do? You can play bishop e2, unfortunately, stopping our pawn there. Yeah, it's bad. So a6 is forced. Bishop goes to f3. Now, what if we play knight to e5, attacking the bishop? You can play king to d8. But in that case, we just play a7, right? Uh, the same is about uh, knight to g5. So if king moves, then we can play a7. And c5, knight f3 wins. Alright, so both knight g5 and knight e5 are possible, in fact. So a6, bishop f3, knight goes to g5. I like this move because it controls additionally e4 square and actually forces bishop to d5. So bishop goes to d5. After that, uh, we can play knight to e6. Creating a sort of knight c7 fork. So uh, if you play c5 in this case, we just play knight to c7 check, king d7, knight takes d5, king goes to d5, uh, sorry, c6, and uh, now we just get closer with the king. So king is inside the square of the pawn c5, so we play king g3, c4, king f3, c3, king e3, c2, king d2, and he can't take the knight because of a7 and promotes. So uh, this means uh, it wins for white. So once again, a6, bishop f3, knight g5, bishop d5, uh, knight goes to e6. c5 doesn't work. We have a shred of playing a7 now. So what can he do? He can play bishop e4, but then knight c5 with the tempo. Just close in diagonal and playing a7 next move. Uh, if he plays bishop f3. In this case, I think we can still play knight to c5. He plays king d8, we play a7, it wins. So bishop can't move after knight e6, so probably only the move with the king makes sense. Um, something like king to e7 or king to d7. Let's say king goes to d7, knight c5 check, king goes to c8 or c7, and a7, knight controls b7 square, that's an important thing. So king goes to e7 instead, we still play knight c5 and then a7. Yeah, that's the solution. What about knight b6 check? King goes to c7. We just play a7, right? It's stupid. And if he plays knight king to b8, we play knight d7, knight c5. Come on. 
it's so easy. And this one. Next one. Oh, this is very nice at very first glance at least. So we are exchanged down, but we have the pawn on h5, which is a very dangerous pass pawn. But what is more importantly, that rook on b6 is really limited. Uh, let's start with something straightforward. Let's say we play h6. He plays rook a6, we play h7, uh, rook a3 check, say king to b2, h3 is controlled. So after h6, he has to play king to f7 or something. And if h7, then king g7, he stops the pawn just in time. Actually, we can uh, completely limit the rook uh, by playing what? By playing a bishop to d3. Or maybe bishop d7 check, you know? Bishop d7 check, because if king takes d7, h6, rook a6, h7 check. No, this is not correct. Bishop d7 isn't correct. So let's say bishop d3, rook can't move to a6 because we take on b5. So he has to move the king. Sensible move is king to f7. In this case, we take on b5. If rook takes b5, king c4, rook goes to b6, b5. Now the rook is completely limited. King goes to f6, for example. King b4, king goes to g5, king a5. Uh, rook takes b5, king b5, king takes h5, king b6, king g5, king b7, king f5, king c7, king e5, king c6 wins. <coughs> Just in time. This looks like something deserving attention. Uh, but what if after bishop d3, king e7, bishop b5, king f6, he simply ignores this bishop on b5. We can play king c4. But king g5, what is next? So probably after um, bishop d3 king e7 bishop b5 king f6 we have to spend the time on king b3 creating this threat of king a4 now he takes on b5 we play king c4 rook b6 b5 he plays king g5 we play king b4 king h5 king a5 rook b5 king b5 king g5 king b6 king f5 yes uh the extra tempo in this case all right, bishop d3, king goes to e7, uh, bishop takes b5, king goes to f6. Can we somehow improve this line? We can play just h6 in this case. Now, if he plays king g6, we have bishop e8 check, king h6 and b5. It wins on the spot. So after h6, he has to play uh, rook takes b5, king c4, rook b6, b5, king g6, king b4, king h6, king a5 takes, takes, king g5. That's the same. It doesn't work. Right, bishop d3, king f7, bishop takes b5, king f6, king c4, king goes to g5. No, we can't win the tempo here. Oh. That is really strange. So bishop d3, king goes to e7 or f7, f7 probably. And bishop takes b5. King f6.
Yeah, it's really hard to find it. So you would start with the h6 here, then king f7. h7, king g7 doesn't give us anything, so rook a6 is ready. Um, bishop d3. Let's try to calculate that uh, again. Maybe we missed something, but... Okay, bishop d3, king f7, bishop takes b5, he plays king to f6. Or even king to g7, do you know which one is better? Now, king b3, rook b5, king c4, rook b6, b5, king h6, king b4, king h5, king a5, rook b5, king b5, king g5, king b6, king f5. King takes b7, yeah, he plays king e4, attacking the pawn, and if king c6, king e5, and black wins. We need a temple. We need to win a temple somehow to make this line work. How to win this temple? I don't see a temple winning thing here. So bishop d3 forces king to f7. Now... <clears throat> we don't have anything connected with the h6 because, well, he already can play rook to a6. So we have to take on b5. He plays king to g7. Now what? If king c4, then king h6. Already blockading that, and we are kind of in Sook Swan. Oh, now I understand that. So after taking on b5, if he doesn't take on b5, come on, I was so stupid. Mm, that's probably because I'm already tired. So, bishop takes b5, right? He plays something like, I don't know, king g7 or whatever, king f6. We can simply play bishop to e2 after that. We still control the a6 square. And we have a shred of playing b5. Yeah, it's over. It's lost. My god. That was so simple. And if he takes already, we are just in time. We're just in time to implement this and wins all right that was fantastic yeah the point was that uh, I was really confused by the uh, line uh, king to g7 or king to f6 I forgot that the bishop is not forced to go somewhere to e8 or d7 or whatever so e2 is just good enough i mean bishop d3 king here bishop takes b5 king uh for example g7 right so okay i just play anything like bishop e2 let's say all right it says bishop d3 is better but it doesn't really matter so it's the same king here and just b5 so the point is that that square was controlled and now it's over